We've seen um, interpolation, which is within your set of data, and extrapolation can be immensely useful for being able to work out trends, being able to get to data you do not have access to, because you only measure at discrete points in time. Um, but of course, all of your predictions, they all fall prey to the same problem, which is that if you're just looking at a set of data and then like eyeballing a line through it, well, you've seen some of the answers and you've compared, you're like, oh, mine is different to theirs. Mine is even different to the person next to me, right? So we need to do this more precisely, but thankfully we have the tools to do this. Now in your booklet, if you flick forward a few pages, um, three or four pages-ish, um, you can see this little heading that says using technology. Now the technology that you guys are expected to be able to master is of course your scientific calculator. So grab it out there and I'm going to show you how to get to this line of best fit which you can use for interpolation and extrapolation but do it much more accurately. Now we're going to start off and I think it's good to refresh our memory from this one last week. We're going to start off by first entering the data. We've done this before so hopefully it's a bit of a, um, a reminder for you. Let's look at exercise 8 1a, just that first set of data there. It's just got six data points, right? You can see they're listed as coordinates. So let's remember, turn things on, make sure you clear everything just in case you left anything behind from last time. And uh, maybe you guys can help me, remind me, how do I get into stat mode in the first place? Okay, right at the top there, mode, very good. And uh, <laughs> on your calculator it'll be two, but on Mrs. Lee's fancy calculator which can do complex numbers, and you're like, what on earth are complex numbers? Uh, it's three, but you guys can say two. What do I put when I get to this screen? Yeah, I want two A plus BX, that tells you it's what kind of data? It's two variables, bivariate, right? So let's go ahead and hit that. You know you've done it right because you've got your two columns for your X and your Y. So let's just quickly, you've got all your data points there. Let's make the first one X, the second one Y. Conveniently, your X values are one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then go ahead and input your Y values. 1.7, 1.9, and so on. Like I have before, I'm going to highly encourage you, as soon as you've entered all your data, just scan back up using the keypad, use the arrows to scan back up through your data and make sure you've actually entered it correctly because everything that your calculator is going to tell you in a second is all based on this data. If it's inaccurate, it won't tell you it's inaccurate, it'll just give you the wrong results. If you're happy with your six data points, go ahead and um, clear that. Now, I want to get um, well, in this exercise, you want um, Pearson's correlation coefficient. We know how to get to that. Uh, in fact, that's going to be the same place where we get this other information that the question is asking for. So have a look. How do I get to Pearson's coefficient again? Shift 1, because you can see there's stat right there above the 1 button. Okay. Um, Pearson's coefficient, it's under which heading? Have a look. It's, it's REG, which stands for, do you remember I told you what it stood for? It's an abbreviation of regression, okay, big fancy word, but it's just about this line of best fit. So go ahead and hit that. Now, don't press anything yet. If I wanted Pearson's coefficient, which would I go for? I'd go for three, which is R, right? But actually, I want to go further than that. You can see this question and what we've been looking at in extrapolation and interpolation. What we're looking for is really the line of best fit. Okay, now I'm just going to pause for a second. Do you remember when we selected this mode, it said this. Do you remember that? Right? Now what is this? This is the equation of the line of best fit. There's going to be this information here, which is a y-intercept, and then this, what's this tell us? Coefficient of x. Gradient. It's your gradient, right? Is it, go, is it going up? Is it going down? Is it flat? Okay. Wouldn't be very interesting data if it was flat. So the a and the b, have a look at your calculator again. The a and the b are now what we're after. Okay. So you can see the first one there is a, if you press 1, and then hit equals. Go ahead and jot that down on your book because we're about to erase it. So 0 0.44 is your A value. And once you've got that written down, 0 0.44, you then want to clear that and go back into that regression section. So stat, 5 for regression, and now where's B? Two. It's just the next one over. 2, and then you'll get another number for that. Okay. So if you jot both of those down, 0 0.9457 is what I can see on mine. Um, did I enter my data right? Have you got the same number? Thumbs up. Okay, fantastic. So once you've written those down, what's that telling us? I have a line of best fit now. It's going to be 0 0.44 plus, uh, what was it? 0 0.9457, etc. Yeah, okay. Um, ooh, 
X. We kind of need that, that's so important, right? And what's great is, this is accurate. This is not us guessing and like, oh, it's roughly in the right spot, and I'll prove it to you. Here's our data set. These are the six data points that you just put into your calculator. Okay, and you can go ahead, you can verify this in Desmos for the other data sets that you get. What was the equation of the line of best fit that our calculator was telling us? Zero point? Zero point four four plus zero point nine four five seven and then don't forget the um sorry five seven don't forget the x. What do you guys think of that? Pretty bang on, right? Now you'll see later on, um, you've got lots of data sets that do exactly this. Okay? You've got this straight line and it roughly goes through, but you'll also see as you turn the pages, there'll be other data sets where a straight line just won't cut it. And so we'll have to look at different models for that a bit later on. Okay? But just to refresh your memory, input your data, uh, go back into shift one and then regression to find all of uh, these pieces of information and you're good to go.